Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to create a new layout today, especially for National and International Scrapbooking Day. I'm going to be using the new Santorini collection from Prima Marketing designed by Frank Garcia. And let me just tell you, this is a beautiful collection. It has beautiful papers, all beach themed, more like European beach themed, but it's good for any type of beach theme because I've not been to Santorini or to Greece. So I'm going to be using a picture of me of my husband in Punta Cana, which is basically in Dominican Republic, but anything goes. So you could use any beach pictures for this and you could create any type of project, whether it's a layout, a, an album, mini album, anything like that. Today I'm gonna to be creating a layout and I will just show you some of these papers how beautiful they are and I already ripped the ones that I want to use but I just want to show you more or less the ones that are there so there is this paper which has beautiful flowers in the background and then really cool like cards that you could use to add as titles or you could use for your life book project if you want so it's really nice to have these small little ATC kind of size it's a bit bigger than an ATC but you know what I mean it's just that type of size and you have this flowers. So it's, they're very romantic and has a lot of like romantic words and things and pictures, flowers. There is this really nice one here, which is like a lot of them are foil. It looks really, really cool. And another romantic kind of page. Then we have, oops, I'm skipping. This one over here, like how cool that is. And then these that have like sayings on it and you can use on your layout as well and behind those are this are these oh i might have sh yeah no i didn't skip anything are these which is another nice picture and my favorite one which is the one with the stripes and it has in the back these also these really nice writings and sayings so i picked a couple of them that i wanted to use just because you can't use everything in your pad and it comes with a lot of it so it's it's good for that because you could create a lot of things with it and I basically uh, I picked this one. Oh, and I also picked sorry I kind of forgot to pick it out I picked this one as well I want to combine them kind of I'm like thinking you know sometimes when I create layouts I don't actually know what I'm going to be doing I kind of go with the flow so I want to use the bottom part of this, so I might cut this out with a trimmer. I was thinking more with a, with, yeah, maybe with a trimmer. So what, why I'm saying trimmer, just because I want that to be at the top of my layout, and I want the top to be straight, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm not cutting, I'm not measuring right now, because I just want the end of this thing. So it doesn't really matter. Kind of where it is this is what i want for the top of my layout so i can put this one aside and i'm just going to remove with this one i'm going to remove this thing from the top just because it's not like it's, because i'm going to be working with the top of the layout i want to make sure that i don't have that tag sticking out so now i have it all perfect this is how i want my layout to be and this is what I want kind of on top here. So let's see, I haven't decided what I want to do. I want to raise this a little bit so you can see better. And I really love this and I really love these stripes. I don't want to cover all the stripes. I don't want to cover it almost at all. So I want to, I'm going to have to rip a little bit. I want to rip kind of from this flower on this way. I don't know. I haven't decided how I want to do it, but I want to make sure that I get that white ripped part. So kind of like that. I could then include this underneath, even though it's backwards. No, I want that flowers, but no, it's, I could include it here, but I'm not going to do that. I think this is good. This is kind of gonna get set the set my layout. And again, it's too, I'm gonna put it a bit higher, even a bit higher, just so you can see well. So this is going to be my top. 
And I might cut out these flowers after I incorporate them as well. But right now, this is what's going to be on the top of my layout. I'm going to glue this. So I'm going to use, just because that's all I have at hand, it's my fabric hat glue. I could use, look how pretty it is from the back. Like you could use like a tape runner. Doesn't really matter what you use. I'm just going to use my fabric hat glue because that's what I had literally right here. And this is going to be the top of my layout. I, I could have done it all blue, but I really wanted to kind of cut this up and kind of break the stripes. So that works well that way. So in order to break this even more, I'm going to use white gesso to cover some of the areas as well. So I'm going to take the white gesso and you could add this either with a palette knife or with your silicone brush. It doesn't really matter. And I want the movement to go down. So no, this is not covering the way I like it. So I'm going to take my palette knife. You want something that is not too pointy. And I want to kind of turn it around a little bit because I want this direct I want the movement to go in this direction. So and you don't want to cover it all, but you want to create that movement going down. So And as the palette, as the palette becomes drier, it creates a really cool texture. Let me just kind of cover these flowers a little bit, not a lot. Okay, so um, basically my layout is going to be around here and I might just cover this a little bit more only because the pink is kind of not going there but I didn't want to cut this up. So I might cover the flowers just a little bit more and if I want to incorporate after, if I want to incorporate the pink into it or the purple, I can. But right now it's covered and I only see is the nice areas here where I have the writing. And, and that's all I want to see. I want to see kind of that writing and the background and this blue coming out of it from underneath. So it looks kind of distressed. That's perfect. That's exactly how I want it. So I'm really excited. I'm going to dry it up and just show you the next step. So it's a great way to have, well, I can actually talk while I'm drying. It's a great way to have gesso. Gesso is a great thing that you can use to cover things up and protect the paper. So right now I used it as a dual thing. I covered the things that I didn't want to be seen and kind of tone it all down. But it also protects the paper because I'm going to be adding a lot of different textures to the background. So let me dry this up and I'll come back with the next step. One of the things that I love doing is adding texture to my background and I love using stencils to do that. And of course modeling paste because it gives it that 3D look. And I grabbed one of the stencils from Prima Finnebear. This is kind of like a doily pattern. And I'm going to add it in some places, not everywhere. I just want to kind of have that pattern in certain areas to add the texture that I want for the background. And I'm going to follow more or less the pattern of the of where I have the gesso. I don't want to put it in other places because that's the movement that I have for the layout. After many years of doing layouts, I kind of know what I like and how I like my layouts to look. And I tend to follow that same pattern or that same design because I know it's going to look good and I'm happy that it if it looks good that way. It's my style and I like it that way. Every person has their own style of layout and I just basically give you the tips on what to do and how to how to use the different products but 
the style and the colors and what you, you choose to add to it is up to you. You don't have to do the exact same thing as others. It's great practice to kind of copy people, to kind of learn how they do things, and then develop your own style of layout. I like this shabby chic mixed media style of layout with the pastel colors. I mean, I'm not using pastel here, I'm using the dark blue, but I just really like that style of layout. And adding texture, although you can't really see it right now, it is there. And once I add the liquid part of it, so the sprays, you will be able to see it much better. So I'm gonna clean up my stencil and everything else and dry this up and then get back with the next step. To add some color to the background, I took a favorite color of mine, which is the Color Boom Spray Cobalt Blue. It's beautiful and it's very shimmery and it kind of matches the colors of this collection. So I really, it's the first thing I thought of when I wanted to add color to this. And you could use this with a paintbrush or you could just spray it the way I'm going to do it now. It's up to you. You do not have to do it the way I'm doing it. I just want to spray a little bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water and let it run and spread everywhere. You want it to spread so you can really see that beautiful design and I'm going to let it spread down. I will take a wipe to make sure that, first of all, clean up this whole area here that it dripped, but it might drip too much. So I just want to kind of wipe it off. So I maybe added a bit too much. And it kind of spread everywhere and that's okay. That's part of the design. And that's okay. And then I'm gonna kind of add a little bit more. Just want that blue, it's so beautifully rich. And it created, it created these um, lines, which I don't want, so I can hide them by dripping it a little bit more and maybe to the side a little bit. If you wanna be more precise with it, you go ahead and you can use a paintbrush. Don't be afraid, you could just grab a paintbrush and just, for example, just like kind of paint with it. You could paint where you want it. You don't have to do what I did because if it's too messy for you, you might not like that and it might stress you out. Don't let it stress you out. You see, you can just move the different color and it reacts differently depending on whether or not there's gesso underneath it. So you can see here, there is no gesso and kind of reacted differently than when it's on the gesso itself. And that's kind of like the idea that I like doing. And I'm gonna maybe soak up a little bit of it, but most of it, it's kind of gonna stay there. And I'm gonna dry this up really well. You could always add a second layer to this if you want to. So let me dry this up and see if I like it, if it's dark enough, and if not, I'll add some more. Once it dried, it really dulled the color a lot. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm at the bottom of this one. And just kind of not add as much water. That way I really get the darker color. I want that dark color, I love it. It's just so beautiful. I'm gonna help it again. So, Hold on, just sometimes it's too dry for it to drip. I want that really rich color to kind of appear in my layout. So I need that So I'm moving it in different directions just so I could get that richness. So let's see. Okay. 
And of course, I want to dry it again, so it does dull it down a little bit once you dry. So the layers are so, so important. Layers are super, super important when you're adding things to a layout, especially if you want it to look mixed media. So let me dry this up again, and I will see what the next layer should be. One of the things that I love adding in beach themed layouts is cheesecloth. It gives such a beautiful, soft look to everything. And I love taking a piece and kind of make, breaking it apart, fraying the edges so it looks really like wisps from the ocean or like ocean waves. Just really fray it all around. You could like use scissors to kind of cut it and create, you know, those really wispy, I don't know how to explain it, but you know what I mean. And then I'm just going to create, following the same movement, I'm going to add it to the background. So, um, okay, so it's kind of like this. So it has that same movement to it. And I can glue this with my soft gel or even with with the Fabri-Tac glue. It's perfect for fabric, but I prefer the soft gel because it's matte and not glossy. And I'll just grab this. Just grab this one. Put some of it in behind. It doesn't have to be perfectly glued because we're going to put so many more embellishments on top that it will just kind of blend together with everything. So cheesecloth is a great way to add texture to things. There we go. And then at the top as well. So I kind of have centered, I've centered where I want things to go, which is in this area where my photo is going to go. And if you don't know, obviously I measure the photo every single time to know where it goes. So this is the third layer, fourth layer that I'm putting on. And it's just adding layers upon layers upon layers. That's how I build my layout. So that's basically what I do. So let me dry this up a little bit and just work on the next step. Okay, so I ended up printing a photo of me and my husband in one of our trips. This is in where in the ocean itself. I, I used my sprocket printer to print it out because it prints two by three pictures, which is really, really easy to add to any layout. I love it because they're small. They're perfect for mini albums, for basically everything. And I use this a lot for layouts. When Since I bought it, I've printed a lot of pictures. So it's great for that. And I can print it on the spot. I don't have to take it in anywhere. So I do that. So this is the picture I'm going to use. And there's two ways of raising it. I'm going to, I love 3D layouts. I love when things stick out. Um, this is perfect if you want to display your beach vacation picture. Or you could use shadow boxes to frame them. Or you could put them in a really thick album, one of those 3D D ring binders. So usually I use uh, this thick tape to raise it and I put a few layers of it. But one of the tricks that my friend Delina, who doesn't scrapbook anymore, but is used to make a beautiful layout, she used to raise things using cardboard. And I know this is not very acid free and friendly, but truthfully, as I said before, I've always said this like, I just do this for fun. I used, I started by chronicling everything and then I realized that in 50 years from now, 100 years from now, things, who knows what's going to happen. No, people might not see everything. So I might as well make it how I like it and enjoy myself doing it. I love the creative process of it. I love, love making mixed media layouts. And I haven't made them in such a long time that I've been craving it. So this is great to do. And all I'm doing is just gluing a few of them together. I really want that this picture to be the center and very high up. So as high up as I can, and I might lower it down this way a little bit. 
Okay, perfect. And then I um, will glue the picture. So this picture, oh, actually, I don't even need to glue this. This actually has a sticky background, but it's a pain to take off. So we'll see if I can get it off, then I will just, if I can get the, oh, there we go. I got the backing off. So there we go. And I'll just stick this on top. Perfect. So that's kind of my center. And I did pick this little frame to go there and kind of frame this. It looks perfect. Or maybe even like this. No. No, I will I will definitely use it like this. So that's one of the things. And then I have lots of different flowers from this collection that I really want to add. So let me put this aside. So first of all, I can start with the bigger flowers. These are just gorgeous. And I, don't, I haven't used big flowers in a long time. Not sure if I will use them here either. We'll see how much I can fit underneath. I really raised this because I wanted to try and fit some of the bigger flowers here because they are so beautiful. And I really wanted to have that, but I'm not sure how it's going to go. I might have to even raise it one more. Hold on. I might have to add an extra one here. And let's see, I'll add some more glue there because otherwise it bends my photo. So it's a really raised. You can't really tell, but it's really high. You can see from the side maybe, but not like this. Okay, so the big flowers, I've said this before, I always use them and really close to my photo, kind of at the bottom of my photo in a corner of the photo to kind of anchor the photo. And... The rest I use uh, elsewhere. Now this is two, two blue. So the question I have is whether or not I want to use the pinks or to tell you the truth, I love blue with yellow. It's one of my favorite combinations. So I was really debating whether or not I should go and not go with these colors and go with yellow. But let me first check out to see if it looks nice with the coral. Because the coral looks really, really nice as well, right? And this is part of the collection. But it kind of dulls it. I don't know. Let me see. I'll bring the yellow and I can compare that way. So I went and dug up some of my yellow flowers, my old yellow Prima flowers, just to see how it would look. And I'm going to test it and see how it looks because I love yellow with blue. I think it looks the best. And look how pretty that is. It kind of brightens everything up. So I really wanted to add some of that. So I was definitely going to add the yellow here. And let's see on this side, maybe some of this here. And I want some more of these striped flowers. Let's see. I love the striped flowers, they're so pretty. And I still have some extra left over if I want to use for another layout, right? So this is why it's great, because you can use it for so many different things. So, no, I think it should go here. Maybe too much yellow. It's not good either. Oops. Okay, there we go. And let's see. We need a little bit more. No, that doesn't go. We need a little bit more blue. So let's get this also this one, which is really cute. So I want to take this rose from here. Maybe this other blue flower. So it's just playing around with the roses and the, I mean with the flowers and figure out how you like the layout. I also have these really cute like um, flowers, the little ones, which I like kind of spreading towards the bottom of my layout. It makes it look pretty that way. Let's see. Maybe this one can go up here. Yeah. 
some, these are like lighter yellow, but it's just nice to add different types of it. And it would be cool if I could like kind of stick it underneath here. Yeah. I like playing with the different flower sets and see what I come up with, right? So it's kind of playing around and creating movement in the layout. So that's good. I like how that looks. And you can always I can always add some chipboard because I bought the chipboard that matches this. So it comes with three sheets. And I really like the one that says vacation because that's basically what it was, a vacation. Maybe I'll use that as well. We'll see. Let's pull this out and see what comes up. What's in the third one? Oh, the sailboat looks so cute. Yeah, I might use the sailboat as well. Let's see. I need to kind of open this up. Okay. And see how things look. You have to kind of try things to see how they will look. So vacation. Yeah, so that's good. That's a good spot for it. Travel is good as well. That's nice. Okay, so those are the two things. And then I could put like kind of like this one looks really good. I might have to raise it. Maybe I have to put something underneath it because it's too low. It has to be a bit higher up. And let's see about the sailboat. Oh, it has the cutest flamingos. But let's see. There's also summer vacation. Love this. I mean, there's so many titles that you can use. I love the chipboard pieces from the matching collections because they look so cool together. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is so adorable. I love it. So that's good. So that's basically how I want my layout to be. And I'm going to glue everything to the, I'm going to glue everything. I found one more flower, one more yellow flower. Let's see if that fits because it's a bit darker. Maybe I'll take it instead of this one. And this one can go higher up. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to glue everything. So all I do is, I mean, there's actually already glue here, some glue from before, but whatever hasn't been glued, I can just add the Fabri-Tac glue behind. And I don't even have to move anything. I just basically glue it in the same spot that it is. I just add glue underneath and, and glue it all up. And it's easy that way. It's really easy to glue. Once I glue everything, then I can like do finishing touches and things like that. Which I love adding and I will show you how to do that as well. And I think because I have the yellow, I might have to add some finishing touches in yellow as well. So we'll see, like this is how you play around with everything. You kind of play around and you see how it looks. I'm going to add the sailboat. Looks really cute, the sailboat there. This one I think I glued. This one I haven't glued. So dig out of your old flowers. You don't need to use the ones from the collection if you don't want to. I mean, I love the ones with the stripes, but the other ones you truly can just, you know, get some blues flowers from your stash and oh I forgot that I wanted to glue this forgot about this so this travel thing cannot go here I forgot that I wanted to add this one here yeah 
So maybe the travel can go on top of it. Hold on. Let me first add the glue. Okay, so I'm going to add the glue carefully here. Center this the way I want it. I'm going to center me and my husband in the middle there. And then I'll add a little bit of glue here as well. Because otherwise it, will, otherwise it will not stick. Some things just do not stick to it. Let's see. There we go. That looks nice. It's a bit crooked, but it looks nice. I don't know if my layout is crooked or what is crooked. And I'm going to take a piece of this double-sided tape. You could use cardboard, as I said, as well. And just put it behind here to kind of raise this a little bit. And I'll still put glue behind it because it might not stick. With all the wet stuff behind it, it might not stick. I need to put glue behind this one. So I love yellow and the blue. And I'm very monochromatic in the sense that I like only using two, one or two colors, three colors at the max. But I've seen people putting a lot more colors in their layouts and they look fabulous. So don't get stuck on what I do. Do what you love. Put things the way you like. Like I could easily go put the coral one now here, but I really like it this way. So I don't want to add coral color into it if I don't have to. So that's basically it. Hold on. I want to, I'm kind of hiding the pretty parts of this. Well, not pretty. It's not, it's not that it's it, 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 but, um, hold on. I think I should add a few more little flowers. These little flowers add a lot of character to things. Well, this one is not so little, but yeah, that one doesn't look good. Oh, well, here's some more. Okay, hold on. I find the little flowers helpful for adding little things to details and stuff like that. Okay, that's good. And you see the cheesecloth adds a lot of element, a lot of like beautiful um, texture, which is really, really nice to see. Okay, so for the finishing touches, one of the main ones that I like doing is adding the white gesso. As I, I've said this in other videos, I've always added the white gesso at the end because it really adds beautiful tone and highlights to things. So it's really easy to apply. I grab a paintbrush and I just add basically highlights of white on all my flowers and sometimes on other embellishments as well. So it's really important to add. This is like a step that I really recommend. I think I have not added glue to this. I really recommend this step. This kind of ties it all in. It really helps bring light to things. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. And even to the especially to the dark flowers, but it just ties it all in together really nicely. And you can also use it to like kind of hide things if you don't like the way it turned out. So for example, I found that a little bit, I got a little bit too much blue here and it was too dark. So you could use the gesso to kind of tone it down. I just pat it on the background and it creates a really nice subtle pattern. So that's basically what I tend to do when I'm trying to add things and or take away things for that matter. That's what I'm trying to say. So, and you can use it to also blend in the edges a little bit and continue blending and creating that really nice pattern. So there's a lot that you can do with gesso, especially on your layouts. 
to kind of hide things or even enhance things, highlight everything. There's so many uses for it. So you see, it kind of brings light into everything. and blends things. And you know what's missing here? I'm going to go get some. It's missing some seashells. I I can't have a beach layout without seashells. It just doesn't go. I'm really liking the texture. So you see I'm creating this texture with the white gesso. It kind of looks like an ocean, but it helps blend everything and really make it stand out. And, you, and I can see where it's missing because some of the areas are darker, right? So those places are missing. Things. It almost looks makes it look like a splash in the ocean, which is basically what I'm trying to do. I am trying to hide things, but I'm also trying to create that texture. So it's both at the same time. And it makes it look so cool, especially the last step. The last steps that you bring the layout all together, it makes it look really authentic, really like as if you were at the beach with me on this vacation. Which you're of course welcome to come, but I'm just giving an example. So, there we go. So this is basically what I did. And um, I want to add some shells. So I'm going to go get those as well. So let this dry up a little bit and I'm going to get the shells. Okay, so I brought in some shells and some starfish. I've always collected these either pick them up or I buy them. Both are good. I will link some of those below. I've linked them before. If you want to purchase some of these to decorate your beach layouts, I love adding starfish and shells. And basically just playing, of course, around with the different, different ones. Let's see. I don't know what I want to do. I always have, no, I don't like that one. Okay. There's that. Maybe a shell over here. And another shell maybe over here. Oh, so pretty. I love it. I love, love, love shells. They're a favorite, definitely a favorite. Not sure if I like that. What about this one? Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Maybe I'll put this one over here. And then this one kind of coming out of this little flower. Okay, there we go. So now all I have to do, this is too big, is just basically glue them and I'm done. It's like so easy. I find it easy. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I've been doing this for a long time. So I know kind of what goes with what. As I said, I, I told you I love like yellow and blue. Most people might not think of that, but I love yellow and blue. It looks so good together. Well, I might want to add some splashes of yellow. Oh, my, I might come back and add some splashes of, of yellow. I haven't decided yet. I need to glue first all the shells. And then, oops, I'm getting over there. I 
I might put some more cheesecloth kind of around things. Hold on. A little bit, a piece or more, a little bit more. Just kind of inside here to kind of hide also that cardboard. I don't want the cardboard to show, especially not at the top. And it also looks good. I'm just gonna stuff it in a little bit more and let it kind of hang underneath. Let's I want to cover this flower, but I want to stick it there in between. There we go. Maybe even a little bit more here on the side. So you can cut and like add a little bit more cheesecloth in different areas. And that kind of adds more texture, even more texture if you even want that. Obviously, if you don't want the texture, you don't have to. But it adds like so much to it. I think it needs more blue. This one needs a little bit more glue. I like that it's kind of sticking out like that. I like that. I like that it's like frayed to the bottom. It's really important to get those wisps to kind of go down. I might even like lift this vacation thing a little bit because it needs it. Oh, how pretty is that? I love it. It is definitely very heavy, but I really like the way it turned out. And let's see, do you think it needs a little bit of splashes of yellow? So let me go get that. Okay, so I'm bringing in a color bloom spray. This is the sorbet color. It's kind of yellowish, and I'm just going to cover the photo with some leftover paper that I have. And I could definitely use it and spray it, but I want to be more controlled with it, and there's not a lot left in here. So I'm going to use a paintbrush, and I'm kind of going to get in there and add a few like highlights of yellow in different places. You want to wait until obviously things are dry, especially like the blue, because you do not want this to, to be green. I do not want any green in here. I just want yellow. Oops. So, sorry, I don't have to cover it yet. I do want to add some splatters later, and that I might have to cover things because of it. But right now, I don't need to cover the the picture. I will cover it in a second because then you can see better what I have done. So it adds like a little bit of like kind of highlights to things. You can extend it even to here. Kind of make it look as if the boat is moving in this direction. I like that. Let me extend it in this side as well. So yeah, that looks really cool. I haven't done splatters in a long, long time. So this should look really cool. Okay, so now um, all I have to do is, as I said, cover this. And I'm going to create splatters. Just going with the paintbrush and creating a few splatters here and there. I just love the yellow on the blue. It really makes a huge difference. Oops. So you can take any yellow spray, it doesn't have to be this one, and you just add 
beautiful color to this. And that's it. And there's my layout. All done up. I love how it turned out. Love, 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 love it. And of course, you could add blue if you want back into it. I mean, but I'm not going to go into that. So thank you so, so much for joining me today and for National Scrapbook Day and also like our YouTube hop. If you want to enter my giveaway, just leave me a comment below in the YouTube in my YouTube channel. I will announce this a week from today. And I will announce it here on my YouTube channel. So if you want to win, and you have to first be a subscriber, right? Because you're not, you have need, and you need to also get press the little bell underneath my channel, and get notified when I put in the win, when I announce the winners, because I am going to announce them in the community tab. And if you don't pay attention to that tab, or you don't get notifications, you will not know if you won. So it's really good to have that being notified when you're if you want to be the winner i'm giving it away uh the prize that you will see i will show you the prize in a second it's a prima marketing pack a prize pack it's uh, older collections one well, older they're from january so they're the previous collections to this one as i think it's great to just you know you probably some of you might not have them so i'm giving you oh, this prize pack look at the picture Leave me a comment on this YouTube video and just anybody can enter from internationally or not. It doesn't matter where you're from. I will send it anywhere in the world. So if you want to enter the giveaway, leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so, so much and have an amazing day. Bye. Enjoy scrapping.